we decided to uh, construct this field 7E and 7D, we had wildlife habitat in mind and we went for maximum diversity. So we went for a four prong approach. We wanted to create landscape topography by creating lots of lots of rolling hills, lots of incised drainages. We wanted to break up the sight lines as much as possible. And then we also wanted to create substrate diversity, so we used topsoil, we used scoria, we used suitable spoil. And then, you know, we also plant a host of native species out here. And those have different components as far as what kind of uh, vegetation they, they optimally yield. We give a lot of freedom to the operators to build micro features, and that includes rock piles, brush piles, small depressions, steep banks, those kinds of things, in order to just give more topographic diversity wherever we can, wherever we can take advantage of it. use between 20 and 30 species of grass and shrubs and forbs and legumes out here on these two fields. Um, some of the important species that we're seeding is, uh, with respect to shrubs are Wyoming big sagebrush, uh, greasewood, black greasewood, winter fat, and four-wing saltbush. see that there is an abundance of Wyoming big sage. There's many different plants in a very small area and that is one of the goals of using the suitable spoil is to promote an area for wildlife habitat, primarily Wyoming big sage. Some of the species we're seeing out here include upland birds, pronghorn antelope and mule deer in addition to you know raptors perching on some of the rock piles and ledges that we've uh, constructed and you know rodents of uh, rodents of all kinds and uh, we also see reptiles and, and other things out here too. So. Well I've been in the wildlife conservation business for over 40 years and I've looked at uh, an awful lot of reclamation projects and I've never seen a better one.